Hi everyone. We're going to continue in chapter 10, taking a look at section 10-4, uh, which deals with the sum and difference formula. So we're going to take a look at the sum and difference formulas for sine, cosine, and tangent respectively. And the good news for you guys is when you're looking at the sum and difference formula for uh, each trig function, they take on the same format for that trig function. So for example, uh, the sum formula for sine and the difference formula for sine are exactly the same in that you take the sine of the first angle measure u times the cosine of the second angle measure v, and then you're gonna use whatever sine is in the middle. So for the sum formula, u plus v, your sine is gonna be plus. For the difference formula, u minus v, uh, your sine in the middle of the difference formula is going to be minus. And then we're going to take the cosine of the first angle U and multiply it by the sine of the second angle V. Same is true for uh, the sum and difference formulas for cosine. They take on the same format. They're going to look a little bit different than the sum and difference formulas for sine, but the sum and difference formulas for cosine are going to be the cosine of the first angle U times the cosine of the second angle V. And then you're going to take the opposite of uh, whatever sine is inside of your sum or difference formula. Okay, so if it's cosine of U plus V, it's going to be cosine of U, cosine of V minus the sine of U times the sine of V. And for the difference formula for cosine, it's the cosine of U, cosine of V. Then you're going to take the opposite of the sine, which is plus the sine of U times the sine of V. And then the tangent of u plus v and the tangent of u minus v, the formats for those look the same as well. It's going to be the tangent of the first and then whatever your sign is. So for the sum formula is plus. Uh, up top, it's going to be plus the tangent of v and then it's going to be on bottom one. Then you're going to take the opposite of the sign. So the opposite of plus is minus the tangent of u times the tangent of v. And the tangent of u minus v takes on that same format. So it's the tangent of the first. Then we keep the sign the same, which is minus the tangent of the second. That's our numerator. Our denominator is going to be 1. And then we're going to take the opposite of the sign. So the opposite of minus is plus. And then the tangent of u times the tangent of v. And you guys are going to see these formulas get used in the next lesson uh, when we look at the double angle formulas. Those double angle formulas are going to be derived from the sum formulas for sine, cosine, and tangent respectively. So we'll take a look at this uh, in a little bit more detail uh, in the, the next lesson to come. Okay, so let's get into some examples of utilizing uh, the sum and difference formula. So what these sum and difference formulas allow us to do is they allow us to evaluate trig functions at angles that we were not able to do just using the quadrantal angles and the reference angles only. So for example, um, we can do something like we're doing next where it asks us to find the exact value of the cosine of five pi over 12. That's not a reference angle. That's not a quadrantal angle. So up until this lesson, like we would not be able to find the exact value uh, of that expression. But utilizing the sum and difference formulas, we can actually find the exact value of this expression. So what I'm probably going to recommend you guys do like with problems of this type, it, it's going to be tough when you're brand new to this, like figuring out the reference angles or the quadrantal angles you need to add or subtract. Uh, to find um, the given angle measure. It's kind of tough to do in radian measure, so it's probably in your best interest to write these in degrees. I think it makes it a little bit easier to uh, see what angles you should be adding or subtracting. So if we think of 5 pi over 12, uh, if I want to find that angle in degree measure, I'm going to multiply that by 180 degrees over pi. The pi's cancel. 12 goes into 180 15 times and 15 times 5 is 75 degrees. So we want to come up with two angles that we can either add to make 75 degrees or subtract to make 75 degrees. Okay, so the two angles that we can add, like the um, reference angles that we can add, we can add 30 and 45, which 30 degrees is pi over 6, 
and 45 degrees is pi over 4. So we can rewrite this expression then as the cosine of pi over 6 plus pi over 4. And then we're going to go ahead and use the sum formula for cosine to find the exact value. But those are not the only two angles that we can add or subtract to give 75. We could also, for example, take um, like 135 degrees. So that's the angle in quadrant 2 with reference angle 45. And if I subtract 60... 135 minus 60 is also 75 degrees. So we could also, if we want to, I'm not going to do it for this example, but we can take the cosine of 135, which is 3 pi over 4, minus 60, which is pi over 3, and use the difference formula for that uh, to find the exact value. And you'll see no matter which way you do it, I'm going to work it out the way on the left, but if you want to work it out the way on the right to check, um, you should get the same answer either way. Okay, so if we use our sum formula for this, we have the cosine of the first angle, pi over 6, times the cosine of the second angle, pi over 4, and then we're going to take the opposite of the sine. So the opposite of the, si opposite of the plus sine is minus. Then it's the sine of the first angle, so the sine of pi over 6, times the sine of the second angle pi over 4. All right, so the cosine of pi over 6 is rad 3 over 2. Cosine of pi over 4 is rad 2 over 2 minus the sine of pi over 6, which is 1 half, times the sine of pi over 4, which is rad 2 over 2. And then we're just going to multiply across. So rad 3 times rad 2 is rad 6. And then 2 times 2 on bottom is 4 minus 1 times rad 2 is rad 2 over 2 times 2, which is 4. So we can combine that into a single fraction. We get rad 6 minus rad 2 over 4. And that's the exact value using that sum formula. And you can use the difference formula that we came up with here. If we use the difference formula to uh, take the cosine of 3 pi over 4 minus pi over 3, you should get the same answer um, rad 6 minus rad 2 uh, all over 4 for that as well. Okay, you guys give the next one a try. Uh, you're asked to find the exact value of the sine of pi over 12. So go ahead and pause the video and turn it back on when you're done. Okay, so with this one here, um, the sine of pi over 12, again, I'm just going to write this in degree measure because I think it makes it easier to figure out what angles we need to add or subtract. So I'm going to multiply this by 180 over pi. The pi's cancel. 12 goes into 180 15 times. So this is like saying the sine of 15 degrees. So if we think about uh, two reference angles that add or subtract to 15, um, we can do like 45 minus 30, or we can do 60 minus 45. Let's go ahead and do 60 minus 45. Okay, so 60 degrees is pi over 3. Uh, 45 degrees is pi over 4. So this is equivalent to the sine of pi over 3 minus pi over 4. Okay, so we can go ahead and plug that into our difference formula for sine, which is going to be the sine of the first angle times the cosine of the second. Uh, we keep the sine the same, so it's going to be minus the cosine of the first times the sine of the second. Okay, and then we just want to go through and evaluate this here. So sine of pi over 3 is rad 3 over 2. Cosine of pi over 4 is rad 2 over 2 minus the cosine of pi over 3. That's 1 half. The sine of pi over 4 is rad 2 over 2. So when we multiply each of these expressions going across, we get rad 6 over 4 minus rad 2 over 4, which is rad 6 minus rad 2 all over 4. 
to be honest, if you guys paid really, really close attention, in the previous problem, we were asked to find, like, essentially asked to find the cosine of 75 degrees. In this last question, we were asked to find the sine of 15 degrees. If you paid close attention, don't, if you guys remember the co-function identity, where we could say, like, the cosine of angle theta is equal to the co-function, which is sine of pi over 2 or 90 degrees minus theta. Well, that gives us the cosine of 75 degrees is equal to the sine of 90 minus 75, which is the sine of 15. Those two have to be equal. So really, if you were paying really close attention, you didn't have to do any of that work for the second problem. You would have known that those two quantities there were equal. So that's a good thing to be uh, observant of. Okay, let's move on to the next example. So next example, uh, directions ask us to find the exact value of the sine of u plus v given that the sine of angle u is 4 fifths where 0 is less than u which is less than pi over 2 so that tells us that our angle is in quadrant 1 and the cosine of angle v is negative 12 over 13 where pi over 2 is less than v which is less than pi so that tells us that angle v is in quadrant 2 Okay, so if we want to find the sine of u plus v, um, we're going to use the sum formula for sine. So that's going to be equal to the sine of the first times the cosine of the second. We're going to keep the sine the same, which is plus the cosine of the first times the sine of the second. And the only quantities that we like are explicitly told we're told the sine of u is 4 over 5 and we're also told that the cosine of v is negative 12 over 13. so for us to finish this problem out we need to figure out what the cosine of u is and what the sine of v is going to be so i'm going to go ahead and diagram both of those triangles now i'm not going to draw them like in the correct quadrant i just have to come up with the correct ratios um, for each of those trig functions. Okay, so the first triangle is the one for uh, u. So we know the sine of u is 4 over 5. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, which using the Pythagorean theorem uh, is going to make the side adjacent 3. So we know the cosine of angle u is 3 over 5. And because angle u is in quadrant 1, we know cosine is going to be positive in quadrant 1. Okay, if we want the sine of angle V, well, we know the cosine of V is negative 12 over 13, so that's going to make the side adjacent 12. The hypotenuse is 13, which makes the side opposite using the Pythagorean theorem 5. Uh, because our angle lies in quadrant 2, we know sine is positive in quadrant 2. So sine is the ratio of opposite over hypotenuse, which is 5 over 13. And then let's go ahead and compute the exact value here. So when we multiply across, 4 times negative 12 is negative 48 over 5 times 13, which is 65, plus 3 times 5, which is 15 over 65. And that's going to wind up simplifying to negative 33 over 65. So my question for you guys, if you think about this, is what quadrant does angle U plus V lie in? Because I think if you look at these inequalities here, like you've got two potential answers. If your first angle is between 0 and pi over 2, and your second angle v is between pi over 2 and pi, it's possible that u plus v can either be in quadrant 2 or in quadrant 3. But when we look at the sine of u plus v, the sine of u plus v is negative. We know sine can't be negative in quadrant 2. Sine is negative in quadrant 3. So that tells us that angles u plus v um, wind up making that sum an angle in quadrant 3. OK, uh, on to the next example. So directions for the next one ask us to verify 
that the cosine of pi over 2 minus x is equal to the sine of x. That should look familiar. We just looked at that cofunction identity um, with the first two examples that we looked at. So really what we're going to do here is we're going to prove the cofunction identity. So um, we're going to start with the expression on the left-hand side. <clears throat> the cosine of pi over 2 minus x, that's our more complicated expression. And then we're going to manipulate it through algebra and identities to show that it gives us the right-hand side. Okay, so we use the difference formula for cosine. So that's the cosine of the first times the cosine of the second. We take the opposite of the sine, so the opposite of minus is plus, and then it's the sine of the first times the sine of the second. Okay, so for cosine, it's intercept, sorry, it's maximum, intercept, minimum, intercept, maximum. So at pi over 2, cosine's value is 0 times the cosine of x. For sine, it's intercept, maximum, intercept, minimum, intercept. So the sine of pi over 2 is going to be a maximum, which is 1, times the sine of x. And that expression there is going to simplify to sine. So we just proved uh, the cofunction identity that we looked at in the previous chapter. Okay, we'll do two more examples of simplifying expressions, and then we'll um, do some more examples in the next video. Okay, so directions here say to simplify. So we have the cosine of theta minus 3 pi over 2. We're going to use the difference formula for this. So this is going to be the cosine of the first times the cosine of the second. We're going to take the opposite of the sine, so the opposite of minus is plus, then the sine of the first times the sine of the second. So we get the cosine of theta times the cosine of 3 pi over 2, which is 0, plus the sine of theta times the sine of 3 pi over 2. The sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. So that expression winds up simplifying to negative sine. OK, so we can do the same thing for the next example the tangent of theta plus 3 pi. Um, we're going to use the sum formula for tangent, which is going to be the tangent of the first. We're going to keep the sine the same. So that's going to be plus the tangent of the second over 1. And then we take the opposite of the sine. So the opposite of plus is minus the tangent of the first times the tangent of the second. Okay, so we get the tangent of theta plus the tangent of 3 pi. At all integer multiples of pi, tangent is 0. So that's going to be 0 over 1 minus the tangent of theta times 0. So the numerator is the tangent of theta. The denominator is 1. So that becomes the tangent of theta, which should make sense if you think about it. Because tangent's period is pi, whatever the value of theta is, when we add 3 pi to it, um, it's going to give us the same value uh, as the tangent of theta does. Okay, Because the period is 3 pi, um, we're just essentially like shifting the graph three periods to um, the left. Okay, so that'll wrap up this video. We'll move on to the next one.